Welcome to Toy Poloi. Parental guidance. This video contains scenes of Lego destruction. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Now in front of me here you see the remains of Cobra's Pogo Ballistic Battle Ball. Now stupidly Cobra Commander lent that to uh, Dr. Mindmed and look how it has been returned. It's just a complete state and I think today we're going to have to try and uh, rebuild this uh, Pogo Ballistic Battle Ball and try and get it back up and running because as you can see at the moment it's not in a great condition. Uh, we've got quite a lot that uh, needs to be fixed on it. Uh, there's a lot of parts missing uh, and a few sort of broken areas and I hope that we can sort of fix all of these uh, and get this sort of looking half decent again. As you can see some of these uh, hoses are snapped, they should have little clips on the end of them uh, that clip into the leg sections of uh, the battle ball. Actually you can see here that the uh, end of one of them is snapped and still in the little hole there so we're gonna have to try and remove that as well. The uh, bottom thrusters are broken, there should be little clips on these. In fact, if we look at this one, you can see there is just the end of a clip uh, and these should clip into these holes in the bottom and sort of stay securely in place, which that one sort of does. But this one with everything broken, it's just a bit loose. So uh, we've got to fix that. It looks like some creature as well has had a go at uh, the top cockpit section. This has been well and truly chewed. I'm not really sure what's gone with that. I don't think we can salvage that one so we're going to see if we can find a replacement. And as you can see there are quite a lot of parts missing so I'm going to have to go and hunt down a lot of these missing parts. So let's just uh, get straight on with this restoration and see what we can do. So the first thing I want to fix on this battle ball is actually the thrusters on the bottom. You can see here uh, there are two holes where both of the thrusters sort of clip in place and the way they work is there should be a clip on the top of this and in fact this one just has the remnants of the clip. So you've got one side of it, there should be two sides of that and it's got a little sort of notch on one side and this should clip into that hole and sort of stay in place. Now with the broken clip it sort of stays there but not really. Uh, with this one where the clip is completely missing these don't want to stay in at all. So we're going to have to work out a way of uh, sort of reattaching those. And as with a lot of old toys there seems to be a sort of universal sizing and these holes here happen to be three millimeters. And what else is three millimeters? Well pretty much every piece of Lego you can imagine. So uh, I've had a quick rummage in this uh, pot of Lego pieces which I've used for fixing most toys and we go back to the classic which is the Lego Lance and I've used this again for fixing things like uh, Star Wars TIE Fighters and this happens to be three millimeters. It's also a very good color match. You can see this is made out of a sort of dark grey plastic. That's a pretty reasonable color match to the uh, plastic of these thrusters. It just so happens if we go here you can see that that fits very nicely into the hole in the bottom of the battle ball. So we are going to use that as our replacement. Now as with all of my sort of projects that is a nice neat Lego Lance and I have the remnants of other ones that I've used in other things. I'm going to use this end piece but you can see there it's just the end part of the Lance and we are going to have to drill a hole through the bottom of this. Now I don't know if you can see in there but there is a, almost a bit of a hole already started. So what I'm going to do it's I've got a three millimeter drill bit and I'm going to drill a hole through there. We can then stick a piece of this Lego Lance in place and we'll work out how long it needs to be to go into the bottom of uh, the battle ball there. If that works I'm going to cut off the remnants of that clip and we'll do the same on that one. But to start with we need to drill a hole. So here's my three, three millimeter drill bit. I'm going to just place that in the hole that's already there and we will drill that. I don't think the plastic's going to be particularly thick at that point so this shouldn't take too long to do. You can see it is actually drilling. Sometimes easier to drill down because you can get a bit, bit more force on it. Okay, I've drilled into my mat. But you can see we've now got a hole through the bottom of that thruster. Let's just take away the bits of excess plastic and we'll see how well that fits. Oh yeah that's a really good tight fit which is what we want. Almost tight enough that we don't need any glue in that. So let's modify that and we'll see how well it fits into the bottom of the ball. To work out how long we need to cut this it's going to be just a bit of guesswork really. We can sort of push this in and see if I just hold my hand pull that out. See that's about a centimetre so that gives me a rough idea. So I'm going to cut this. It's a centimetre with this extra sort of uh, part of the jet on it so 
about a centimetre is going to be something like that. So with a pair of plastic nippers, just chop the end of that off. We can now see if that fits in, which it does. Remarkable. And that is a nice firm fit. I've not actually had to use any glue on that. I've not put any glue inside the thruster, but that is a really good fit. Oh yeah, that's very satisfying. So I'm going to do exactly the same now to the other thruster and we can get those two attached. But that feels really quite a good firm fit. Very nice. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Next on the list is the legs and the hoses that attach the legs to the main body. Now, uh, what came with this is uh, two legs and two hoses, both of which are broken. Now you can see here there's a little clip on one end of it and there should be a sort of a bend and a clip on the other end of it. I do actually have an original one here just so you can see. Uh, and that is what it should look like. So you can see there's a sort of right angle with another clip. And these clip into uh, the holes on the underside of the body. So you have uh, one bit that clips into that hole there. And then the second sort of right angle clip should clip into this hole on the sort of knee joint of the leg. Now on this leg uh, a child has clipped it into one of these other holes which to be honest it does look like it would clip into as well and to be honest it does and it's snapped off so the first thing we've got to do is to remove that and the only way to do that is actually just to drill it out so because there's no point in trying to keep it so I'm just going to use a drill bit and drill that out then we need to work out a way if we can sort of uh, repair these broken hoses and add something to the end of them that will enable it to sort of fit in that hole but the first thing we can do is just to drill out that little broken clip there so I put a smaller drill bit in my pin vice and I'm very carefully just going to drill into that and see if I can sort of wear it down a bit and then get a pair of pliers in there and pull out the remains of it. It's not the easiest thing to do and to be honest not that worried if there's a little bit left in there because it's all quite hidden but it'd be nice if we could try and get most of that out. So really all you're doing here is actually sort of drilling away the plastic that shouldn't be there. You can see that sort of starts to disappear we don't want to go too far because we don't want to go sort of into the main leg part of the plastic. We should be able to do that maybe with a, a tap. No, nope, I've got a pair of tweezers here. So let's just get the tweezers out. Which hopefully we'll be able to pull out the remnants of the, uh, the old peg in there. A bit more drilling. It's a lot of guesswork when you do these sorts of uh, fixes, just trial and error, something will work in the end. Let's try that. Well, it's jammed in pretty good. I can feel it moving. There we go, and that is the remnants of the broken peg or the broken clip removed. To attach this hose, I'm going to modify the way this end works and change it slightly. If we look at the original, you can see the right angle is pointing sort of away from the hose, but it actually needs to twist around and go into the leg. So the body is there and this is sort of twisted. And that puts quite a lot of pressure on the, this joint here, which is why I can see that this would snap quite a lot of the time. So I'm going to change the way this works. And on this one, I'm going to put the end of this hose sort of coming in at a right angle this way. So it actually sort of lines up uh, how it should with the leg. And that will put a lot less pressure on it, especially as this is going to have to be glued as well. So we want something that's slightly sort of less, uh, sort of under pressure the entire time like this original. Uh, but it should work just as well. And what I'm going to use for that is again some more Lego. I have a lot of these which are Lego antenna. You'll see me use these uh, for a lot of fixes, uh, but it's just a very useful piece. Uh, it's a slightly sort of bendable uh, piece of Lego, uh, three millimetres at this end, two millimetres at this end. And what we're going to use is this end piece. But again, just as with the engines, uh, this little hole here happens to be just slightly over three millimetres. So you can see that that fits in quite nicely. What we're going to do is take uh, just these three millimetre end of this with a tiny little piece of the two millimetre end. So we're going to just chop off that. And then you can see there is a piece here which sits onto one of the Lego studs and we're going to modify that to make it just have a slightly sort of bit of a lip over the end of uh, that three millimeter piece that just happens to sort of latch onto that. And to do that we're going to have to cut off all of the 
sort of outer edge of the uh, sort of little uh, peg hole, whatever you call it, the bit that sits onto the Lego pegs there. So we've now got a flat piece. We're going to trim off most of this uh, sort of little plate that's left, but leave a tiny little lip around the edge, just enough that can catch on the inside of this hole. We'll do a little bit of filing as well, just to make sure that it fits nicely. But you want to be very careful doing this. I'm just going to cut as close as I can, but not right close because you just want that little bit left. So let's just do this. It can be quite rough at this stage because we are going to get sanding. So you can see at the end here, it's just slightly proud of uh, the three millimeter uh, sort of shaft part of uh, that aerial. I'm now going to take a small file and sand it down. Sand it so it's got a slight angle sort of pointing inwards as well. And that should give us something that will latch onto the leg quite nicely. So this is just a nail file. These are very useful to have in your toolbox, especially for doing things like this because they're very cheap and you can work quite quickly and quite roughly with them. And when all the grit has gone, you can just chuck them away. And they're very cheap, as I say, you get sort of, I think I've got 10 of these for about a pound. Very useful to have. They have two sides, you've got a rougher surface and a slightly smoother surface. You can see there I filed that down. There's still just a little lip left on it, but it's now got a slight angle to it. And I'm hoping that this should just push through this hole like so. And once it's pushed through, it's now caught as well. So you can't pull it out again without a bit of force. There we go. That's what we wanted. Something to just sort of push in and then is held in place. We can now go about attaching this to the remnants of the hose. Now this next process is actually quite tricky because what we need to do is drill a very small hole into the last nodule that is left on this hose. You can see it's broken off the front there and what we want to do is drill a small hole in the side of it, a hole that is the same diameter as this smaller part of the aerial, which is two millimeters. Should be possible and then we can glue that in place on the side and that will be our replacement attaching mechanism to the leg. So I have my pin vise here and I've put in it a two millimeter drill bit. I now can very carefully try and drill a hole into uh, the remnants of this hose. The plastic is quite rubbery so it's actually not too bad to work with. You can sort of push in and go quite slowly. So I don't want to go all the way through and I don't want to sort of damage the top of it. I think that should be possible. Yep, that is working. There we go. Now we can just do a quick test fit of that Lego piece into the side. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to drop a tiny bit of super glue onto the end of that and glue that in place and then we can do a test fit. It might be I want to sort of colour this and paint it so that it matches. You can get these antennas in different colours. I do actually have some grey ones. Maybe grey would have been a better colour. I think black will work though because most of this is going to be hidden inside of the leg but could go with a grey one if you wanted. So let's just glue this in place. I'm going to bring in some super glue. Put a very tiny amount just on the end of that because it doesn't need to hold it particularly strongly, it's just to give it sort of some grip. And we can drop that back in there. And we'll let that dry and then we can do a test fit onto the vehicle. So here is the battle ball. Here is a leg. I'm just going to slot that into place like so. I'm going to take our repaired hose. I can clip the end that does work into the main body of it. So you can see here, this is our newly made piece of Lego. And I'm going to push that through the hole like so. And you can see that holds the hose in place quite nicely. It's got it at the right angle. If you uh, don't replace this end and just sort of stick the hose in, it ends up sticking out at a really odd angle. And that's uh, worked quite nicely. You can see there's the little bit of Lego. It just sort of slides in and out. But most of the time you're going to have that left in the sort of in position. And it also means we can take this out if you ever want to uh, take this vehicle apart. It still is detachable. It's not glued in place. 
I think that works quite well. I might just put a little bit of paint on the end of that maybe. Actually, to be honest though, you can't really see it. It's just a black peg inside a black hole. I think that works quite nicely. So there we go. We've got the legs reattached with the hoses repaired. I've actually repaired another hose there already. So you can see that one has been repaired. And that is the original one that I had. I think overall, that's quite a satisfying result. Now, one other bit that is often missing on this uh, battle wall is actually the aerial here. And I was thinking while I was making these, uh, sort of repairing these hoses, that actually you could use the same uh, sort of Lego piece to make a replacement one. This is an original aerial. You can see here it's a nice long aerial, has a slightly thicker bit at the bottom with a little hole in it. And that hole sort of lines up with that tab on the side of the battle ball. But I was having a look through my sort of box of Lego pieces, which I showed you earlier. And apart from the fact these aerials are a very good match, so you can see that's pretty much the ex exact same length. It still has a little ball on the top of it. Uh, the bit you're missing then is just this thicker section at the end. And I found this, and this is called a Lego pillar. So it's a round piece of Lego, and I think it's sort of five Lego units tall with a square bottom to it. I did actually look this up. It's a number 43888. Uh, and that, if you can get it in this darker grey, which you can, because I just double checked, I've only got it in light grey at the moment. But if you stick that on there, you've got something that is the basis of a replacement aerial. It's going to need a little bit of working, but you can see all you've got to do is chop the bottom of that off, shape it a little bit, and then cut a hole into it, which is the same shape as this, which you can do again with a pin vise and a pair of uh, uh, plastic nippers or a scalpel. You should be able to cut a hole like that. And then you'd have a very good replacement aerial for this battle ball. Now I'm not going to do this today and show you, but I think it's a project that most people would be able to uh, work on. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see me use a lot of Lego, so you'll know it's very easy to work with. But I think there's a good idea. If you're missing the aerial, then uh, grab yourself an antenna and one of these Lego pillars, which I say the number is 43888. Uh, you can get it in this dark grey colour. So grab one of those and you'll be able to make a very reasonable looking replacement aerial for the battle ball. Now we come on to the chewed up cockpit glass. You can see this is really very damaged and there's nothing I can do to save that. Uh, luckily though, I was chatting to some of my subscribers and uh, I managed to find myself an original set of these, so I do have some replacements. But I was thinking again uh, that I probably could go ahead and make one. If you've uh, watched my some of my Star Wars videos, I did work recently making a new windscreen for the Star Wars Land Speeder, and I made those out of some Christmas baubles. And uh, this is one of the uh, windscreens that I made, or this one I sort of my sort of prototype windscreens. And look how similar that is to uh, the cockpit glass of the Battle Ball. In fact, it almost fits uh, perfectly without any sort of modification. So I would say if you want to make a new cockpit cover for this battle ball, then I would go down the route of getting some of these. These are uh, sort of plastic Christmas baubles and they come in various sizes. This one is an eight centimetre diameter bauble. You get two halves of it that you sort of clip together. The plastic is very easy to work with. You can just cut it with a Dremel and also glue it using plastic weld. And you can see that that is a remarkably close resemblance to uh, uh, the sort of missing cockpit glass here. So I think with a little bit of work, you could make something that would work very nicely. I'm not going to do it today because, again, I think it's nice for you to have sort of projects that you can try yourself. But if I was going to do it, I would use these uh, Christmas baubles as a great starting point. Very easy to work with and very cheap. As it stands, though, I do have a replacement here. So all I need to do is uh, slot that into place. And we have to unclip the inner ring of this cockpit. There's just a few little clips on the inside. I can unclip that and we can take everything out. You can see that's the driver's seat, which should just sort of sit in place in there. This one is also broken. It's missing the clip at the top, so I'm not going to use that one. So we'll put this one back in place. There's a target on one side of these, I noticed. So we'll put the target at the front. We just clip that on, clip that one on. So there's just two parts, well, that's the wrong way around. That's why that doesn't work. Clip that on like that. I've always found this a little bit finicky to actually get to sort of stay in place and hold together while you're putting it in. So let's just do that. I'll line that up, push all the tabs in. Hopefully that will just slot in place without too much effort. Like so. Yep, that's the cockpit replaced.
And then we just have the final couple of bits to go. I have the bottom gun here, which just clips in a little bit awkwardly into the little clip on the bottom section like so. And then we have uh, two missiles, one of which I was able to grab off eBay. Some of these pieces are, seem actually quite easy to find. Uh, they're often available on sort of various sites. eBay had a few of the pieces I needed. Uh, there's a, a website I use called Eternia Collectibles that often has pieces for uh, G.I. Joe and Action Force things. Or another one called Action Figure Supplies, again, has a lot of uh, pieces sort of lying around. So often you can grab uh, bits off those websites. But eBay is generally my sort of first port of call if I'm searching for pieces. And that's all the bits of the battle ball. Uh, it's now good enough for uh, Dr Mindbender to send it back to uh, Cobra Commander. And as you can see, the battle ball is now up and running. It looks uh, really nice. So I want to say a massive thank you to Sai from Retro Revival, uh, who sent in the uh, sort of the remains of the battle ball that you saw at the start of the video. Do check out his YouTube channel. I will put a link in the description. I also need to say a thank you to Mike Smith, who I did a trade with and sent some uh, toy ploy bits and bobs over to him, who was able to supply me with uh, some other parts, a leg and a hose and some other bits and bobs. And also to Chris Overstreet, who uh, got in touch with me on Instagram, who I did another trade with and sent some bits uh, because uh, he supplied the last few missing pieces that I needed to get this battle ball all up and running. So thanks to everyone who uh, helped in this restoration. I also want to say thank you to Omar Khan who very kindly donated uh, this really lovely complete battle ball to me uh, a while back in a big sort of box of uh, other G.I. Joe bits which I'm slowly working my way through. So I thought I'd show it here today because uh, the two together look really fantastic. And I may uh, actually come back to this and modify one of these to make it look like the Red Shadows version, which is the British Action Force sort of colourings, uh, because I think uh, with some Red Shadow logos, the skull and crossbones on the front of this, it could end up looking really cool and sort of differentiate it between that and the G.I. Joe version. So I might come back and do a sort of custom on this in the future. So I hope all the tips and tricks in this video have been of interest to you. If they have, then please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.